awesome. So for anyone that sees this video later, this is Luis, who just joined us. <laughs> <laughs> and she's a Windows user, so uh, let's try to figure this out. Um, so, um, so yes, can you, I'm gonna put links on the, uh, on the um, Google Doc that I sent. Let me compute my computer so I can see that too. Um, so, uh, Luis already has Mobax term, um, but um, which allows her to connect to the Gypsy. Uh, but let's try to do the SSH key pairs. Um, uh, you want me to share the Mobile screen? Yeah, can you share your screen? Yeah. Yeah. That way. Um, Okay, so here's um, yeah. so um, um, awesome. Oh, so you, you're sharing only the app, right? Not the um, yeah. I can share my whole desktop though. Yeah, I can share the desktop. That way we can see the browser pages and stuff, right? Um, um, cool. Thanks. So, um, I have the SSH. Yeah, so this is. Mm -hmm. uh. This web page does not like to resize, is what I've learned. Which page is that? This is the, so it's, oh. so there's the SHH key page, and then they ask you to go to this MobX term configurations page. Okay, cool. So we'll use that one. Okay. Um. I'm just quickly looking at it. Um, okay, so this looks good oh, to me. Sorry. Because uh, <laughs> um, um, uh, in the past, I've done the, the other route, which is to use uh, Putty. Um, that's what like Andrew um, uses. And, um, um, and we, we might also want to install all of that uh, from Pudi. Um, and uh, the main reason of, for doing that is that um, um, there's a text editor called um, uh, Notepad++. And then there's a, um, there's a little piece of software co called um, NPPP2R, uh, which is like Notepad++2R, plus plus which um, uh, enables some key bindings. That way you can send um, code from um, Notepad++, that text editor, to the terminal. Um, and I believe Mobex term might have something like that too. Um, that's why I guess Andrew was telling you you can try multiple of these versions. Now, uh, the goal really is not to, I mean, um, that's a setup that Andrew uses, um, right? And that we've used in the past. I've used that quite a lot also. But the goal is to uh, uh, set up um, the RStudio um, interface, really. Um, so we won't necessarily do the WinSCP and Notepad++ today. Um, so, but in order to use the RStudio uh, route, we need to actually set up the SSH keys. And I like what the mobile XTERM uh, help page tells us to do. So let's just try following that. So, um, so yeah, it says like open mobile term. Um, then it's further down, I think. Um, right, optional did, setting up SSH keys. Yeah, I did the part where I said no to saving my password. So I think this is where I was. Okay. Yeah. So let's you know click tools. Um, Moba X key yeah. generator. Um, so it says like, oh, you don't have a key. 
so let's click on generate and so at the bottom you see that there's multiple types of keys and there's one called rsa another one called vsa etc so we're going to use the default one which is rsa this is actually the same type of key we would create on a linux or, or mac laptop um, putty which is the other program for making um, um, putty gen which is the program the companion program for putty that one makes um, keys in a front called PPK, uh, which is a Windows one. Um, so let's generate this. Um, um, I don't know if you know what SSH key pairs are, but like um, the way I've been describing it is like it's two files. One of them that says how uh, Luis looks and another one that says um, uh, this is a description of, of, uh, of, of me, of how I look right now. And if the description of me and the description of Louis matches, then you are able to log in, right? Okay. Um, okay. So this created a key there, and it says like, oh, pub, um, public key for pasting into open SSH um, into the um, tilde slash dot SSH slash slash authorize keys file. So this is the uh, the the description of how Luis looks right, and so we need to copy that information and put it on the on the Gypsy server. Um, so yeah, uh, select all of that text, copy it. Um, let me just see what are the rest of the options of the uh, steps that they specify. Uh, Um, so they say actually to not use um, control Z because apparently that doesn't work. <laughs> so like. So I gotta do the actual. Do. Yeah. Copy. Yeah. Copy. Right. Yeah. So I think you can close that window. Um, okay. So. Um, Cool. So you already logged in into the cluster, right? Yeah. And I see that you already enabled the option to see hidden files, uh, mobile Xterm. So on the left side, and you have um, your files. Go to the .ssh. So this is a directory that specifies um, some files for you. And I see that you don't have really anything there. So let's go to your terminal window on the right side. Um, or maybe you can do it uh, by right clicking. Sorry, can you right click and say new file? Uh, yeah, I think that's to create new file. Oh, oh cr awesome! So uh, create a file called authorize underscore keys. I might not even use my Windows laptop. <laughs> uh, wait, what's the what's the extension on that? Uh, there's no extension. Okay. Uh, sorry, it's uh, it's with a D authorized. Awesome. Then right click on it and say um, open. Yeah. So Mobex term, just like CyberDog that we've been, I've been teaching from uh, uh, Mac user, CyberDog actually now has a version for Windows, uh, will allow you to open files. Um, that way you can edit them on your computer without using um, the terminal interfaces. So you have paste now your SSH key, add an empty line at the end. Yeah, awesome. Save it and close it. Okay. Okay. So, um, so let's try. Uh, um, so let's try uh, using them for logging in with Mobile Xterm. Um, so let's see. Um, so just end this session. 
Um, I think even uh, I think we're in the part of first go to uh, settings configuration uh, on, on Mobux term. Then click SSH. Um, I think that's where we're at. Um, Mova X term password settings. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, yeah. Uh, we need to go to Mova X term uh, management. So I think it's on the general there. The key Mova X term passwords management. Awesome. Um, uh, uh, what else? You didn't put a, a passphrase for your key, so otherwise you would need to enable the safe SSH key phrases as well. Um, I don't think we did that part. Yeah, no. um, I mean they advise doing it. I don't, I don't do it because otherwise you always end up having to type a password. <laughs> um, and then like the passwordless login version of it. Um, so, Okay, so we don't need to do that. Then it says next on the configuration window, go to the SSH tab. So that's, I guess, where we were. Wait. It's on so the just top. save this as asked? Yeah, we didn't actually change anything there. Yeah. So you can, you okay. can click OK, then go to the SSH tab. Then uh, we need to use um, on the um, on the last ball section SSH agents. We need to uh, click the option use internal SSH agent, and then uh, we need to add a key. Um, and so at that. Where is our key file? So I think if you go to, um, where did they save your key file? Mm. Okay, can you go to um, um, libraries on the left, then go to documents? Um, all right, scroll down, which should maybe, hopefully, you, you, um, I think it's called further down. Oh, we don't see it. Mm. Uh, where did our key get saved? Your home document. Okay, so I see how theirs is just in documents. Mm -hmm, that's where we are right now. Yeah. Let's see it home. Maybe it's there. Nope. We did save the key, right? I don't remember doing anything that saved it onto Windows, unless that was that was the part where after we did. Uh, all the... Okay, let's. Okay, sorry. Um, can you close this then? Close. Uh, click OK. Should I unclick this, or is that going to? No, that, you, can, you can leave, you can leave it clicked. We'll okay. we'll go back to this window in a bit. Um, say no, because uh, we need to make the key. So go to, uh, what was it? Um, um, uh, and if you go to settings again, sorry. Um, on the right, yeah. Or like, or sorry, was it tools? I think it was tools. Tools yeah. Mova as key generator. Yeah. Uh, yeah, say so click generate. Mm -hmm. uh, select all the text again. Yeah, it does not like the controls. Yeah, no. Uh, then now I'll say, um, uh, uh, yeah. But, yeah, we need to edit the, uh, the file in the cluster like you're doing right now. If it decides it ever wants to open. 
There we go. Yeah. We'll add an empty line at the end. Oh, wait. Oh, man. Oh. <laughs> Well, that that. Be whether you want to okay. overwrite the file. So I think you need to yeah. Yeah. Uh, add an empty line at the end. Yeah, you have it. Cool. Nice. Uh, save. And it's going to ask if you want to replace the file. Yeah. I think you said yes. I didn't see yeah. that. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, uh, but on the window where you have the key, where you generated the key, we actually, uh, yeah, there's a save, uh, save public key. We did actually this is oh. stuff we missed earlier. Um, okay. So actually, save this in your documents. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, can you call it like um, um, SSH key or something? Uh, what do they call it in here. So um, no, can you call it? Um, can you create a new folder? Sorry. In your in the documents, this is gonna. This is not actually for them. This is gonna be for uh, our setup for um, uh, for our studio. Can okay, you create a folder called .ssh? Awesome. Uh, and oh, it did not like that. Oh, uh, it doesn't let us uh, start with that. All right, just call it .ssh. And then inside of there, um, uh, name this file, call, call it id underscore rsa uh, a instead of h, sorry, uh, dot pub for public. Just dot pub? Yeah, yeah the pub, yeah. Okay. Um, I want to double check that it actually is um, a file that we can read. Um, so can you just, um, uh, yeah, find it. I'm surprised it. Well, it thinks it's a publisher document, but yeah. Um, all right, awesome. Um, um, can you do the same for saving the private key? What do we just call this? Um, so this one, call it um, ID underscore RSA. Oh, and I guess this will be the PPK for uh, version of files. The ones that are the ones that are Windows specific. Yeah, it's uh, uh, because. Um, yeah, save as type um, the, the menu that is below the file name. Yeah, it says a uh, pretty private key. So yeah, put a dot ppk at the end of it. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Okay, now can we go now, um, now can you go, you could close this window, I think. Um, then go to uh, settings. And configuration, yeah. Then go to SSH. Uh, we don't need this because we didn't, you didn't put a pass key. Okay, yeah. Um, um, you can, um, now go to your um, uh, go to your uh, libraries, then go to documents. Yeah, then go to dot. I mean SSH. That's what we call it. Then select the um, um, then select the ID underscore RSA PPK version. This is a private one. Uh, click OK. And now it says restart, say yes. Um, okay, so let's try to connect. 
Boom. Awesome. Look at that. So now you have Mobux terms set up. Um, this PPK file, you can also use it with PuTTY. Um, okay. Uh, so you, we could also do the WinSP uh, PuTTY Notepad++ setup. The part that we need help now <laughs> is the, um, uh, is for um, uh, this, the next part will be a bit trickier. I've done this in the past, but I don't remember um, all this, um, the, the name of the software per se. So uh, I'm actually just looking at my computer a tiny bit. Um, um, in the meantime, um, um, you do have the latest RStudio installed? Um, I'm not exactly sure if it's the latest, but it's a... Uh... So if you go to help on the top right, click um, check for updates. Oh. I know you, you're, you have an old version because um, um, it's on the third option. You have a version 1.1. And the latest is, um, so yeah, while you install that, let me, um, Um, so we'll let that install. Um, in the meantime, I'm um, I'm also going to ask you to um, um, to install something else. Um, I'm putting the link on Dropbox. Uh, is um, the website is Git for Windows Windows. Wait, so you're putting the link on Dropbox? I don't know if I... Oh, sorry, not Dropbox, uh, Google Docs. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, wait. Yeah, sorry. Slap that in this window. Yep, get, there we go. Mm -hmm. So, um, can you open the gate for Windows part? Okay, so I think the RStudio is all set up. Mm -hmm. um, awesome. Uh, we, we won't use it until later. Um, can, can you go to the link that is uh, the Git for Windows one? This one, one above. Oh, the no, one above. The bottom one is, uh, you know. Click on download. So this one is one that we need to install with non-default options. Okay. So this is where it gets tricky. Um, and, um, and the GitHub link with, um, that's a thread that I made where I, um, show a lot of this stuff. Um, um, so yeah, click next. 
Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's okay. Click next. That's okay. Next. Um, then there, um, what are the options in the menu? Notepad++. I'll use the Notepad++. Plus plus. It's a lot easier. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, click next. Now this is where it gets tricky. Um, so we want the last option, which um, this is this is basically we're installing a terminal, just like the ones we could use on the cluster. Okay. Um, uh, it's just that this is the terminal that comes um, uh, uh, prepackaged on the Git for Windows um, uh, utilities. And uh, this is the one we're actually going to uh, configure our studio to use. Um, so click next at this point. Um, yeah, open SSH, that's okay. Um, sorry, can you click back? I, there was a new text that I'm not familiar with. Tortoise Plink. Oh, that's okay. We will use open SSH. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's okay. So, I, um, the other option that I change is um, um, is the check as is command Unix style line line endings because uh, this will make it easier for you to work with people that don't use Windows. So Windows and Linux, they have a Mac. Um, they have different um, ways of encoding what a line ending in text files. And so the one that is a lot more portable is the Unix style version. Okay. Otherwise, like um, files will look is different. Like you'll notice this. You won't notice this on Windows, but you'll notice it on other computer systems. Uh, so click next at this point. Um, and then yes, use Minty. Yeah. Uh, this nice. one's good. Yeah, that one is good. Uh, yeah. Cool. Um, uh, Um, can you see if you have the putty, can, putty space key generator installed on your Windows? If you search for it, maybe it will show up. Yeah, I think it, I think it's called putty gen, putty gen. Right. Yeah. Without the underscore. Oh yeah, that one. Oh. Cool. How many windows uh, can we get going? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Uh, actually, click on uh, view, uh, launch Git Bash. Yeah. Oh, well, sorry, no, no, I'll click it, I'll click it, because I want to show you how to actually open it. <laughs> we don't rely on this. Yeah. You, you don't need to see the release notes. Yeah. Cool. All right, so that's done. That's done. So the pretty key generator, can you click on load? Um, and then, um, we want to go to your documents to the SSH folder, the PPK file. Yeah. Open. And then, um, um, then under, com under conversions, I say export open SSH key. Mm -hmm. Click on that one. Uh, yes. And so now call it ID underscore RSA. And click save. Uh, is this pub or just RSA? This is just without anything. Okay. Cool. So this, uh, we use this uh, pretty key um, 
um, conversion utilities to now create the keys that we can then use uh, from Git Bash. So you could close this window. Um, and then um, uh, you can open Git Bash by going to, um, yeah, just type git space bash. So this is the terminal window that they uh, come installed. So this is, um, it gives you like a Unix-like feeling even though you're on Windows. Um, okay. So it actually uses something called mean GW, which is like um, a set of like Linux select um, utilities that people have made for Windows. So if you type PWD, um, this is a, a Linux command, uh, which uh, prints the, um, the P is for print, and W is for uh, uh, working in this directory. Um, cool. I don't know why we're in 12, 6, 7. Three. Oh, that's like the username for this laptop because I set it up in a dumb way and then I never fixed it. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, where are we? Okay. Um, can you type uh, the the command ls space l h uh, sorry ls which is for list then dash um, so delete, delete the l then l for list then h for human and then a for all yeah press enter so this is going to list all the files you have um, can you make the window bigger sorry um, Okay. Uh, can you scroll up? I'm not sure where it's, it was in the output that we missed earlier. Okay, I don't see it. Uh, okay, cool. So um, can you type um, uh, mkvir space dot ssh? Uh, this one oh, with dot the dot ssh. Yeah, actually, because you created the other one, I would delete it. And you can do that with um, RM, uh, no. Well, I mean, maybe that is a command. I don't know. It could be a yeah, command. Yeah, I think. All right, cool. <laughs> mm -hmm. Then, um, um, so uh, one second. Let's see like, if we can do this. Uh, okay. Um, so actually we can do this outside of, uh, of these commands, which will be easier. So if you go, if you open um, a file browser uh, on, on your windows, um, go, to, um, go to this PC and uh, click on Windows C. Click on your user on user, sorry, then on your username, which is one, two, et cetera. And so you can see there that we created the dot SSH directory. Mm -hmm. So can you copy the files that we made, the IV RSA, um, um, the pub and the one without a file extension? Can you uh, drag them and copy them, uh, put them there? Not the PPK one. The PPK one we need to leave there, such that um, okay, so they can uh, such that Mobex so... term can uh, can log in. But okay. we're copying we're copying the ones that are um, in the open SSH format into this other directory. Cool. Now, can you go back to the Git Bash window and type? Um, can you uh, uh, type cd dot ssh? Okay, so this, we're in the uh, hidden SSH directory. Um, in order for things to work properly, we, um, we need to double check that the permissions are okay. So can you type ls space um, uh, dash l a dash l h a. Cool. So, um, okay, so the dot SSH, I'm sorry, I'm gonna check, double check with mine. Um, that we have the same permissions. Um, okay. 
Um, so the problem is the open SSH protocol will will double check that the permissions look okay, and if they're not okay, if they're like too far uh, too wide open, then it won't let you use them. Um, so we need to change your permissions. Um, so can you type? Um, um, let's do uh, ch mod. Um, um, uh, let's do uh, let's do um, so I don't actually have I think I have the right permissions in my own Windows computer <laughs> uh, but it seems to work um, okay so I'll I will copy the ones that I have on my computer even though I'm not sure that they're the correct ones uh, so can you type um, six? Um, uh, uh, let's do six zero zero, um, and then space dot. Uh, what was after the space? Uh, dot. Yeah, press enter. Okay. Um, can you now can you now type, type uh, touch a space config? What was that at the end there? Config, C O N F I G. Uh, N, not M. Uh, that would make more sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, on your Windows um, uh, file uh, browser window, um, can you right click on config? And then add it with yeah, no pad plus plus that'll work. All right. Next, uh, I need to send send you some stuff. Um, copy there. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, one second. I'm finding. Um, um, Uh, let's Okay, I put stuff on the Google Doc for you to copy. Where it says your username. Um, Do I replace it with my, my username? <laughs> Wait. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome, you can save that and close it. Okay, so now uh, can you open a new git bash window? I just want to see if it actually worked. And type ssh space j and press enter. Uh, Yes. Yeah, I say yes. Yeah, there she is. Okay. Can you press exit and then try again? Sorry, not press exit. Uh, uh, say cancel. Just say uh, type exit. <laughs> and can you try it again? I'm I'm curious about that error message. I'm not sure we invalid um, format. 
Warning, no XAuth data using fake authentication data from X11 forwarding. Is that from the, the file? That's okay. okay. That's okay. Yeah, that's from the configuration file. We're enabling X, X11 forwarding, but um, I'm not sure why it's telling us that the public key is in invalid format. Um, maybe we'll, we'll probably need to... Uh, okay, uh, but it seems to work. I mean, um, we can try to fix this later, but you can see now that um, now we have a terminal window where we can access um, the cluster and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So at this point, um, can you open our studio? I know it takes a while to open. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're, we've, I think we're, we've done uh, most of the complicated stuff or the, the stuff that is Windows specific. <laughs> okay. I must say, we're gonna start doing now Gypsy stuff. Cool. So uh, I wanted you to install the latest version of RStudio because um, you can see, um, you can see that at the very top, it says uh, in bold, it says console, then terminal, then jobs. Okay. Right, so now um, the latest version of RStudio uh, uh, allows you to use a terminal. Now the problem is um, there's multiple terminals programs. Um, and so we need to tell our studio to use git bash. So if you go to, can you go to a file at the very top? And I click, um, wait, or is it tools maybe on Windows? Um, global options. Yeah, tools at the very end the last, uh, the last option under tools with global options. Then click um, the terminal window, which is the last panel. And it says, yes, it, it, it correctly set, has selected Git Bash. Um, yeah. And so if you want a lot more details about all this stuff, that's why I put the link to the issue I reported uh, oh, okay. on our studio. Um, Cause I reported that the, that, um, you couldn't do some things with the terminal that they had. Uh, and then that, that's where they gave me all these advanced options for installing Git Bash, one of the RStudio admins. Um, okay. Um, actually, uh, since we're in RStudio, can we go to uh, the general tab? So just, okay. Yeah. Um, um, so where it says save workspace on exit, I'm gonna, um, sorry, I'm gonna open our studio on my own computer. Okay. So I can tell you, you know, uh, the options I use on our studio. Um, Ask always never. What are we looking yeah, for? Yeah, never. This is a big like uh, type of changing if, you've, if you're used to uh, having our um, save your workspace, but it's, best for repeatability to never have it saved unless you, um, and if you want to, you can explicitly do it, but, um, but it's best not to have that. Um, okay. Cool. Um, next under code, can you change it from two to four for the tab width? Can you deselect the auto detect code in the indentation? Um, can you deselect the auto indent code after paste and the vertically align? Can you, um, can you select the soft wrap R source files? Um, okay, can you click display? It's on the top. Um, uh, can you click uh, show selected line, show margin. Uh, sorry, highlight select the line, which is the second ah. one. Yeah. Um, uh, then uh, click show syntax highlighting console input and click highlight our function calls. Oh. Can you go to saving? Um, 
line ending conversion, can you select, uh, instead of flat from native, can you select um, uh, POSIX? POSIC, POSIC? This is a Linux format for line endings. Okay. Uh, um, uh, can you uh, select the ensure that source files end with new line and, uh, and the strip trailing? Awesome. Uh, um, then I don't think I changed anything on the rest. Um, then on their appearance, um, can you on the editor team select Merbivore? You, you'll be able to change this, but we're gonna we're about to change uh, configuration files in the cluster that um, where I have some colors that make it easier to read on the dark mode. Um, but uh, I have comments there in case you want to change your own colors. So, Okay. Uh, but we'll do that in a, in a little bit. Um, can you click Git SVN? Um, cool. So it actually detected the SSH RSA key for Git, right? Um, it's the same one that we're using for the cluster. Mm -hmm. um, so we need it. We'll we'll need to do some GitHub setup in a, in a moment too. Um, so click OK to all of this. And it's going to ask you to restart and say yes. Cool. Um, so can you close our studio? It looks, looks much cooler now, so that's great. <laughs> right. uh, so uh, go to a mobile term. Um, and then um, um, this is the cluster, right? So can you create, um, can you on the left side, uh, like create a, a new file, uh, um, uh, call it reproducibility.r. Reproducibility. Um, okay. And uh, can you use capital R instead of lowercase? Because I'm not sure that the lowercase one gets detected as a correct file extension everywhere. Um, yeah, click OK. So now let's say you had a file, right? A, an R script on Fluster, and you want to uh, work with it with RStudio. So what you would do is you would log into the cluster using uh, Movex term. Then, um, then uh, right click the file on Movex term and then say um, open with and click our studio. So at this point, we're gonna use Movex term or CyberDuck or WinSCP, any of these programs to open the file um, from the cluster into our computer. What all of these programs do is that they download the file to a temporary location in your computer. Um, so this, this gets a bit complicated, um, but uh, it, it creates a temporary directory in your computer uh, where it downloads this file. You can see that temporary directory um, on the bottom left panel, um, the console, if you move your mouse, just so I can see that you're seeing it, right? It says uh, C dot, you know, users, et cetera. Your username, documents, mobile term, slash, remote files, something, something. Okay. Right? Um, and so um, if you go on the right side, bottom right side of the RStudio window under files, right? Um, okay. You can, this is the, the R studio is running on your laptop, not on the cluster. And so it only sees the files that are in this um, temporary directory that uh, in this case, Mobux term or CyberDog or other programs are like syncing. So if you open multiple files using Mobux term, you'll see them there. Right. Uh, you won't see your local files. You'll see the ones that are being synced type of thing. Um, so now um, um, on line one on the top left panel, which is the R script that is getting synced, 
you can type commands. So for example, type library, open parenthesis, then uh, put quotes and type session info, which is one package that we'll uh, use. Uh, it's without a space, the package name. Right. So uh, at this point, you might be used to uh, uh, using the keyboard shortcut um, control enter, right? And you can use that right now, for example. And what that will do is that it, you know, uh, it selected the line of code you had and it tried to evaluate it in your console, right? Uh, but we don't want to be doing that because the console is your R um, running in your own laptop, not the one on the cluster. So this is where we need to change things. So um, uh, on the bottom left, um, we're going to uh, log in into the cluster. So under the terminal there. Um, say allow access, I guess. Private networks or? Yeah, yeah. Um, just whatever Windows lets us work. <laughs> and, uh, um, yeah, uh, on terminal one, there click and say new terminal. Um, can you type? Um, does that look okay? Can you type SSH space J? Uh, oh, so it's using the Mobex term one. Hmm. It's not using the Windows Bash one. Can you click? Uh, can you click? Okay. Can we double check on the tool global options that we have the uh, under terminal? Oh. Okay, so it's switched back to command prompt. So, oh, now I can't. <laughs> now it's not seeing uh, get back at all. Interesting. So this is something that Mobux term changes enough stuff that it doesn't let us work. Okay, let's get let's get out of Mobux term. So, um, so can you close this R Studio window? I haven't done the Mobux term setup, so that's why I didn't I didn't know this stuff. The Zoom um, window is all my way. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'll save. And I'll close save. this too. Uh, what is this? Uh, oh, your Mobile Mobile Storm. Storm. Yeah. So I want to have you install Windows CP where I know that this does work. Okay. Um, do I have that going already? You might have. But uh, do I have to install it special? It's probably old too. Um. I mean, you could check if you could open it and see if, and and check if it has. Um, um, Definitely installed this like over a year ago. So we has um, a newer version. Upgrade. Uh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> it's best to always have the latest thing. I'll need to figure out how to do the mobile term stuff then. Um, I'll play around with it later. Yeah, so, okay, so was it me re-logging in to mobile X term that changed no, our studio so or? This is from, um, I kind of have a hint based on, I was helping someone else that also uses Windows and mobile X term uh, changes a lot of um, environmental path variables and stuff. Um, and so it's probably like not letting um, RCDC that you have Git Bash already. Um, so maybe there's an option that allows you to do that. But, um, oh, I thought we were close. <laughs> uh, let me see my open. Uh, my own witness key in case I need to remember. Um, okay. Um, yeah, full upgrade.
Um, yeah, click finish, which will launch WinSCP. Accept. Mm -hmm. they're, I think they're asking for donations at that point. Oh, wait, I already did that. Oh, so you opened the installer twice, maybe. Oh, uh, OK. Um, yeah, so I see that you have Windows CPU open on the bottom right. All right. Cool. Okay. So now uh, select, um, yeah, new login. We're going to use the SFTP protocol, which is there by default. Um, the host name, can you type um, uh, uh, JHPCE01 dot um, J H S P um, dot uh, yeah J H S P H dot E D U. Um, then can you uh, select your username? I mean, or type it. Sorry. Then under advanced, um, can you click login? I think that's the option we need. Logging. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, sorry. So then under, let's see. No, 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 don't close that, sorry. Um, it's one of them. Maybe security on the left. No. Okay. Trying to remember, sorry, where it is. Oh. Um, okay, sorry, uh, click cancel. Um, can you just click advance without the, the drop down? Awesome. Okay, under SSH, select authentication. Then uh, there, um, private key file. Um, um, you can use the, the one in your documents, the SSH, the PPK version. Mm -hmm. Click OK. So for the login? And then, uh, no, no, no. So now I would click Save. Um, and then, um, uh, you know, you can change the site name. That's like the... That's like your um, acronym type of thing. I call I call my engine Gypsy. J H P C. <laughs> it's like what did I miss? There we go. Mm -hmm. Click OK. So now click login. Say yes. There it is. Cool. So now right click on reproducibility. So now we're like at the same point where we had um, a similar thing in Mobex term. So click edit there. Then uh, say edit with, and then browse. And, um, or sorry, maybe maybe without the browse, maybe, maybe it's on the drop down menu. Nope, okay. All right, so now you need to find the RStudio. Um, Executable. In programs. Pro, uh, let's try. Pro, yeah, uh, and you see there, our studio bin. Um, then scroll down. Our studio exe. Uh, oh, I didn't see it. Oh, I just went for the okay. Sorry, that was <laughs> yeah. too quick. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's just try this. Uh, Uh, so yes. Yeah. Okay, so now it's finding the temporary file through WinSCP. Is that what it was telling me? Okay, cool. Um, can you go to the terminal tab? Oh, can you go to tools, uh, global options? I'm just curious if these, if they're not letting us use the. Uh... Oh yeah, he does. Okay. Okay. Um, can you try uh, type? Type in SSH space J. 
Okay. Oh, okay. So this lets us use the git bash. Okay. Um, so now we're in the cluster, but um, <laughs> uh, we're in the cluster, but uh, uh, but we are on the master node, on the head node. That's what it's called. Um, so this is like the the computer that lets people log in into the cluster, and need, we need to request a computer to work on. Which is um, QRSH, right? Yeah, they QRSH. Us good about this yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so this is gonna um, request a computer for you to work on with your default settings. It's taking a while. Um, in the meantime, um, on the WinSCP window, um, let's see, where is this? Can you go to options on the top? Preferences. And, um, right. Uh, Emily is the one that knows this. Uh, I need to find the option for enabling um, seeing hidden files. That's what I want to do. I think it might be under, um, it might be under um, inter, uh, sorry, window maybe. No, I don't see it. Um, oh, I need to bring my own Windows CP on my on my Windows. <laughs> Uh, it might be under Explorer, sorry. Nope. Can you go to interface? Let's just keep, you know, looking at it, sorry. No. Um, I'm just gonna go with the answer. <laughs> Sorry, it's under panels, apparently. Uh, and show hidden files. Okay, I wouldn't have guessed that. <laughs> yeah, me neither. Okay. Click OK. Uh, so now you can see hidden files in the cluster. Um, so actually, um, the cure stage failed to run on your terminal. Hey, can you on the on Windows CP? Can you open the dot SSH directory that you have on the cluster? It's on the right side. The left side is your computer. The right side is a cluster. Okay. So, uh, um, okay. So in the cluster, I mean, sorry. Um, let's let's work on the terminal window that you have on our studio. Um, so like I said, we're in the comp head node, uh, head compute node, but there's a lot of different machines. And the same SSH key stuff that we use exists um, also on these machines um, for like, uh, otherwise it asks for your password. And so can you type, um, this is actually, this command is on the first um, link that I put on, um, on the Google Doc. Um, um, the very first link. 
the, so this is the same thing you would use in your computer. Oh, okay. So the SSH dash keygen um, space dash T. So at the very top, you want to fork to them. That very first command, SSH. Um, yeah, so can you, can you type that or copy paste it? Uh, it's uh, with an N instead of a B. Uh, press enter. Then it's asking if you want to save it in that file. If that's okay. Press enter. Um, no passphrase. That's okay. Press enter twice. And then press a lot of enters. We don't want to see this. Cool. Okay. So can you type QSH again? Oh, still asking for your compute password. Okay. Should I give it to it or? Yeah, so uh, I know why it's asking for your compute password. I messed up something. Or you, I mean, you can press Control Z, sorry. Just press, press Control Z. Um, uh, can you go to the dot SSH hidden directory and then type uh, touch, um, um, uh, on the cluster window. Um, yeah, type uh, touch space config. Um, then from WinSCP, can you open that file? Um, and and then we're gonna. Um, uh, sorry, I'm I'm opening my own one on the cluster, just so I can give you stuff to copy paste. Um, uh, actually, I'm not sure we needed to do anything. Oh, we needed to have a new terminal window. Um, okay. That's okay, you can close this, sorry. <laughs> um, I think you, um, on the terminal window on our studio. Um, sorry. Uh, you type exit, this will exit your connection to the cluster. Then you type, um, oh, exit again, sorry. I'm not sure why. Okay, so we're back to your computer. Now, can you log into the cluster again with SSH space J? And now, uh, can you type cure RSH? Uh, still asking for your password, okay. I'm a bit confused. Um, can you type, can you type your password, your cluster password? Oh, apparently can't type. That happens to all of us. Hmm, okay. Uh, okay, can you, okay, now we're in compute 104, right? That's one of the computers. Um, so I, I think we have something there. Can you type a list? Sorry, can you go to the hidden.sh directory, then list all the hidden files? So. Does it have to be? It says ls space dash lh and a. Um, uh, sorry, can you press, can you do it again, but we don't need it. So you just press the up arrow once, then add an a. Oh, no, well, yeah, press enter. Mm. 
I don't know. The configuration looks okay to me. Um, oh, I know what we're missing. We're missing the adding the adding the stupid authorized keys file. So WinSCP, please. We we didn't add the public key to the WinSCP to the authorized keys. So you can can you uh, open the id underscore rsa dot pub file? Um, edit with like um, Notepad plus plus. Yeah, copy. Oh, oh, you copied everything. Well, I can just open it in the WinSCP editor, but mm -hmm. whichever you want to. Yeah. You can you can. Um, uh, it doesn't let it. you do it with no fat plus plus. Okay. Whichever have to, we have only to need to copy this. It, but I could. What? Yeah. We 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 only need to copy this the whole line. Okay. We don't we don't need to do anything with it. Fancy. Okay. You can close that. Um, go to uh, authorize underscore keys. Now we need to paste it at the end of it. Like on a new on a new line type of thing. And we need to have it, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay, so that's it. Okay, cool. Can you close this? But does that need a new line or anything, or is that just? Oh, yeah, it does need a new line at the very end. Okay. An empty new line. Um, that's like the format for all these files. That's why on our studio, we enable source files to end with a new line. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so, okay, can you. Um, can you go to your terminal, uh, type exit once to exit compute node 104, uh, type it again to exit the cluster. Now log into the cluster again. Now type QRSH. Cool. Yay. So now you don't need to type any passwords. Cool for that part. Um, oh, okay. So reproducibility. <laughs> you cure stage. You have your R file that you are uh, uh, syncing through WinSCP. Um, now on uh, after you cure stage, we need to uh, uh, load uh, a module for uh, R. Um, and so for that, uh, on the terminal window, can you talk, can you type? Uh, module space load a space uh, conda uh, lowercase um, then uh, underscore capital R slash uh, sorry forward slash not backwards um, 3.6 point X lowercase yeah, yeah, X yeah is that good hmm? It's lowercase x? Yes. Okay. Press enter. So this loads, this like tells the cluster to say like, oh, we want to use this particular version of R. So if you type capital R on, on the terminal, press enter, it loads R. Um, and it loads this particular version of R, which is the 3.6x version. And mm -hmm. it loads R in the folder that you're currently in. And like now you can type the R command get WD for get working directory. And you'll see that you're gonna be in like slash users. Um, sorry, you need a parenthesis. Um, um, users, uh, your username, right? Um, and that's actually where we have uh, the reproducibility.r file, right? If you type the command in R, dear, open parenthesis and enter. Right, we see that we have the reproducibility.r. So this is what you want to do whenever you work, right? You want to go to WinSCP, go to the folder where you have your R script, open it through WinSCP on our Studium, then on the R Studio terminal, log into the cluster, um, um, request enough memory on your current stage command for whatever your step or analysis you're doing. Um, and then um, go to the, the directory where you have your R script, um, then open R there after like loading the module for R, right? Once you're okay. this phase, 
which is quite a bit of of steps, right? <laughs> That's why I think like uh, recording all of this can help in case you want to revisit anything. Um, um, on the top left, where you have the repository.r, now you can type uh, library open space, open, open space, <laughs> open parenthesis, uh, uh, quotes, session info. Right. Um, so before you use control enter to evaluate this on the console, you can do that still, right? But, um, but we don't want to be doing this for, we wouldn't want, we wouldn't want to be executing code in our computer. We want to be executing it in the terminal. And so our studio on the latest versions has this shortcut that is alt control enter. So if you press that alt control enter, three keys, it evaluated that on the cluster. Sweet, yeah. Right, and so uh, this particular package session info, info, you have it on the cluster, which is great. Um, okay, so now let's do some uh, cluster configurations. So um, uh, on your Win SCP, um, can you go uh, up one directory uh, and then um, create a new file um, and call it dot capital R, then everything else is lowercase profile. Yeah, awesome. Um, okay, so let me give you stuff to put there. Uh -huh. um, where do I have this? Um, um, Okay, can you copy that there? Uh, so not that, sorry. The, the, oh, everything up here. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm getting ahead. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> The bulleted yeah, so that that there. Cool. The closes. Save it. Close it. Um, um, actually, um, from uh, the Google Doc, uh, can you just the line that starts with cat open parentheses then says remotes, all of that. Can you run the, the part that is inside the quotes, so the remotes, in, uh, without the, not the cat, um, and without the uh, uh, slash n. So that part, we're gonna install the package, that is not a default package. Um, and we're gonna install this on your, um, on, um, um, on the R version of the cluster. Okay, so just down here. Press enter. Yeah. I don't know why it's been slow. Ooh, could not access. Um, is GitHub down again? It was down yesterday. Hmm. Um, okay, maybe we'll we'll need to go back to that. Okay, we'll we'll leave that there for for now. We can always okay. uh, do it again. 
Um, so next, we're going to um, go to um, go to WinSCP, go to your home directory, and then create the hidden the the file dot input rc. Oh, I think I went too far up. Uh, Oh, you lost your internet? No, you didn't because you're talking to me. <laughs> yeah, my <laughs> Zoom's on. Oh boy. Oh. oh yeah, there's a lot of people there. There we go, okay. Mm -hmm. So new file? Yeah. Um, oh, it was the dot input RC. Uh, lowercase. This one is lowercase. Yeah. Awesome. Press OK. Then uh, copy paste the, the contents from the Google Docs. Um, cool. Save it and close it and uh, the input RC. Uh, then go to uh, WinSCP. And now this file already exists. It's the dot bash RC. Um, and then replace the contents of it with, um, with a long list of stuff. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> it's like, that's not that long. Um, so what does this do? Is that down, all the way down to here? Yeah, this will like, um, yeah, this will do a lot of stuff for you. <laughs> okay. Um, so um, this one is full of commas. This will change colors. This will change a lot of things. Okay. Uh, so save that. Um, I'm missing one file, sorry. I'm doing all the config stuff, so when we reset, uh, you'll have things. Uh, why don't I missing? Um, well, um, sorry, I'm, at, I'm getting the information from my, from my files. Uh, Uh, next, this file also already exists. Um, okay, so we can see that they configure your default settings. Uh, these are your default uh, QRSH and Q sub settings. Um, so they, by default, configure them to be five gigs of RAM free, right? Uh, this depends on when they created your account. Some people that have accounts that were created like three years ago have as a default two gigs of RAM. Um, so five actually sounds okay. Um, so in this case, we might not copy paste everything that I posted. Uh, um, uh, we'll, 
in this case, I'm just sorry, I'm changing the format. Um, rule lock. Um, so in this case, you, put, you potentially only want to change the f, the sorry, uh, 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 the h underscore f size, which is the maximum default size. So um, right now it's set to ten gigabytes. We we'll potentially change that to a hundred, based on the stuff that we work on. Um, this is the maximum file size you can create before it doesn't let you do it anymore. Um, and so the idea here is to protect, you know, your working directories against like a script that's gone rogue and is trying to save like a, you know, a very, very big file. Um, um, if you set this to a hundred gigs, you, in, you, most of the times you won't remember that you have this setting. Um, you'll only remember it once you run into something that you need to save something bigger than a hundred gigs. Right. And then it'll be like, Oh, it's not letting me save it a hundred gigs. And you, then you might, maybe at that point you'll remember that you have the default set mm, to 100. Okay. Um, the, the H stack is something that I'm always confused about, but like 256, which is what you have is mostly okay. I forget what was the bug. I ran into one particular program that I had to increase it. Uh, but what I do want you to do is the part about define my email. Um, so. So right by your cursor in the Google doc here. Um, oh, actually, yes. <laughs> yes, I was looking at your window, not mine. Uh, so yeah, copy, paste that um, at the end. And so instead of um, your, you know, type whatever email you want there. And this will be such that if you uh, submit jobs later on with the dash M space E option, it will send you an email um, the cluster will send you an email. So I actually have my Gmail account here. Um, and then on Gmail, you can create filters a lot easier than maybe on the Libra email, but uh, use whatever you want. I'm just trying to figure out that setup, but I can always go back and change this, yes? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's uh, because lower. let's say you submit an array job with 100, um, 100 of them, you'll get 100 emails. Ah, <laughs> no <laughs> idea, okay. But it's it's good to have the emails just so you can see where you know how things are going. It's just that I don't you don't want them to you know um, um, uh, fill your inbox, right? That type of thing. Okay, so now you can save this and close it. Okay, so on the R Studio window, now we're going to use all this stuff. Um, and um, you go to the R Studio window. Um, can you exit? Sorry. I just, um, yeah, can you exit? So this, uh, not, 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 not our studio, sorry. Um, just exit the R on the terminal. Uh, so that's Q, open parenthesis, close parenthesis. Then uh, select the option N for no. Then type exit to exit computer and uh, node 104. Type exit again to exit the, the cluster. Now logging into cluster, SSH space J. And now um, you see you have a different color on the command okay. prompt. And I, this is something I edited and that's part of the bash RC configurations. So I edited it to only show me the current directory that I'm in, not the full path. Because if, if it's a very long path and we work with very long paths, like VCL01, AJAFI, I mean, Lever AJAFI, um, Lab, BrainSeq Phase 2, uh, differential expression, uh, right? It, that's a full path. I don't want it to show it on my on my, on my prompt. Um, I also uh, we did stuff to modify um, the behavior of the up arrow. Um, so, for example, type M. Oh, uh, so if you don't have, if you haven't typed anything, it's the same behavior as the default. But type okay. M, then press up arrow once. Oh, okay. Now so it searches through the commands that started with what you typed. That's convenient. It saves like me it. a lot of time. Huh? Yeah, that's really convenient. Nice. Yeah. But let's say that I, you know, uh, I actually didn't want all, this, all of this. So sometimes what I do a lot is press Control A to go to the beginning of the line. Oh, oh. Wait. Well, you deleted everything. 
Okay. Control A goes to the beginning, then I'll put a pound sign um, just to get, if I, if I got into a part where I don't want, right? Then I'll just make it a comment and evaluate it, right? Then you can press return and start over. Yeah, boom. For this to work, we edited the, the history commands. So now it, uh, it tries to just keep the uh, one version of each command. Um, um, uh, we edited the history length. We made it a lot longer. So save a lot of you know, commands from um, maybe for two or three months worth of commands. Um, 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 awesome. There's one thing now, um, okay. Um, there's a, uh, oh, so uh, can you type QSH? It's trying to log into the cluster. Okay. I mean, to a computer. Um, Does this usually take this long? Uh, it depends how busy the cluster is. So actually, um, um, can you press Control C? Uh, yeah, press. Um, oh, I guess it broke things. Can you uh, type exit and then? Okay. Um, so it seemed to be wanted to log in. Can you type um, Q R S H? The space L dash L, sorry, uh, space uh, blue J, all lowercase. So these are computers um, from Andrew that we have ex exclusive access to, type of thing. Um, can you press enter? Because maybe, maybe the share queue was busy, and maybe the blue J queue is, has more stuff free. Or it could be that the cluster is being slow, and that could be because maybe someone is running a lot of stuff on the computer on the head now when it shouldn't be type of thing. Okay. Okay. So now you see something different. It says like lib adding Libre modules, loading Git, loading yeah. a bunch of other things, right? Um, um, and so we change on the bash RC some default modules. Um, that's part of something we changed there. Uh, so are those already loaded then? So do I not have to write load module? Or is that exactly okay? Exactly. That's a, that's exactly the purpose of it. Um, so now if I just hit R, I'll be in the right version of R. Uh, the 3.6.x. So eventually in like a week or two, everyone is gonna have to update their bash RCs. Okay. Uh, um, Um, okay. Um, so now you, you, you know, you can open R and, um, uh, and it's uh, trying to load the color out package, which, um, has an error of like, oh, uh, 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 well, that's that's what we just tried to get from GitHub, right? But something yeah, like maybe you know, try copying and pasting that remote command again. Maybe it works now. Where was that on here? Color out this is in the R profile. Yeah. Mm. There we go. Mm. Cool. Quit R and then open it again. So now it's to, it, it loaded the color out package. It says like loading require package color out. Right? So now type, for example, the command stop, open parentheses, then open quotes, then say hola. Um, and then press enter. I mean, close quotes, close parentheses. So it changes the colors of your R. Oh, okay. 
and like uh, so before uh, like error messages and stuff were would have been hard to see now you can easily see them so that I mean, this is also why we changed the R studio to memory bore it's to be on the dark um, type of um, version of it such that like these default colors work also okay right. so I mean, it wasn't could, just for cool points it was actually purposeful yeah yeah <laughs> yeah um, yeah so I mean you can edit all these colors right you can edit the color out colors you can edit the R studio colors you can edit your bash RC colors uh, it's just that um, that's a lot of work and we won't do it <laughs> okay uh, um, unless you I mean I have all the comments there if you wanted to on the uh, on most of these um, cool so now can you go to github.com okay. every time I go to the top of my screen the zoom meeting thing like is like what do you want but, uh, okay. I know you, you can move it around but yeah it's annoying this okay we'll put it over here that's a um, on on there if you had a, your window bigger um, your face the and your username will be on the top right on the smaller window it, it showed up um, there on the left but you okay. click there or or the top whichever one uh, oh sorry not that one then the, the top right one <laughs> I thought it would work on the, on the oh then my little thing was over it yeah then click on um, on settings then go to SSH and GPG keys go to um, new SSH key and so uh, call this uh, I don't know Windows laptop or something then on your uh, file explorer Go to the um, yeah. Op um, open the id underscore rsa dot pub file, the public file, and copy those contents. Oh, I see why it's uh, why it's um. Oh, never mind. Delete delete this stuff. I see why we're getting that error message now. So actually, can you delete the first line, line number one and line number nine? Oh, should I not have copied those? You copied it in a different format. Now, um, um, go to at the beginning of line seven and delete that. So basically, we need to make everything a single line. So like, go to the beginning of line seven. nice yeah i did like a ton of um mm -hmm. notepad so the find replace and we'll have a little mm -hmm. practice with that <laughs> okay um, i like that um, um. sorry um, okay, so now it's one the, nice line. I know, but uh, I'm looking at what the format of it has to be. Um, um, so in the beginning, uh, um, at the beginning of the line, delete the comment thing um, and the and the key thing. Oh. Oops. Okay. Yeah. And then this, uh, the, the whole quote thing? Yeah. Type SSH space RSA. Sorry, not space, dash um, RSA, now space. Okay, go to the end of the line. Um, and then type your email. Org? And then add um, uh, org. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, enter a new line. 
Yeah, cool. Save this. Now, this is what you can copy and paste into. Um, can you select all of it and copy and paste it into um, the GitHub? Web. Should it be my, so I have my GitHub set up with my uh, Gmail. Should it be that instead? It doesn't really matter. Um, Cause just, this is just the email of the person that created a key. Okay. It's not like, uh, click add SSH key. Oh, you just ask it ask for your GitHub password. Oh boy, do I remember my GitHub password? Um, oh my, Google does. Thanks, Google. Key invalid. Oh, it's not on the right format. Uh, 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 oh, so we messed up somewhere. You had two equal signs, your key, right? Can you go back to? Can you delete the two equal signs at the end and add a space before your username? Your um, yeah, try that. Hopefully, that's uh, nope. Uh, we messed up something. Okay, we'll need to we'll need to fix that. Um, in the meantime. Um, from um, uh, from Win SCP. Um, um, go to your home directory. Go to dot ssh. Um, open the id underscore rsa pub file, and then copy that one. You can call this one Gypsy. On on um. We're putting this one on GitHub. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah, press add key. So that one did work. Yeah. Um, we'll need to, um, so I need to run to another meeting. Um, okay. But uh, I'll ping you afterwards because um, um, once I'm done with that meeting, uh, because okay. I think we we need to figure out the the GitHub part and the GitHub configuration on Gypsy. We're almost okay. done. Uh, but then then um, um, once you have that, then you can use GitHub properly on Gypsy too. So okay. um, you know what time? Uh, so I will potentially be done at 1230. Uh, at the latest, I'll be done at 1 p.m. OK. All right. So um, yeah, so um, maybe you can figure out the, the SSH key pub format. It might be that we need to open the PPK one again and export it, export the, the public key. This is a public key, not the private key. Um, my, you know, tiny things. Something is missing there. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Well, uh, we can chat later then. So. Okay. Okay. See you, Luis. All right. Bye bye. Bye. From the cloud. Cool. All right. So after a break, <laughs> we're back. <laughs> uh, okay. So, yeah. Can you share with me your screen again? Um, I think. Um. So yeah, we need to fix that particular file, right? Um, yeah, so. So, oh, you close your screen, I think. Oh. Oops. Sharing of screens. There we go. Yeah. Oh, so, um, can you, um, on Windows, can you search uh, Pudigen? What was that? Um, uh, um, Puti? P U T T Y. Oh yeah. Then that one, yeah. Open it. Then click on load on the bottom right. Yeah. Then find your PPK file. This is the Windows version of the file. That's like our master file, really. That's the one that we created with like Mobux Derm, and where okay. we've been um, creating all the other files. So open that. So then click on um, maybe conversions. 
on the top. Um, click on export, open SSH key. And you click yes. So no, I think this is the, the hidden one. Okay, so not that. Okay, click cancel. Um, so there it says public key for pasting into open SSH authorized key files. Okay, so copy that part. All of that. Oh, and it doesn't let you. Yeah. Or okay, so this, yeah. Try that again. So, um, <clears throat> so we, we wanted to fix two things. We wanted to, yes, uh, upload it to, um, to what's called um, GitHub. GitHub. Yeah. So let's try that because we, it tests for us fairly fast whether the format works or not. Uh, then add SSH key. Ooh, okay. So now Easy. we can go, <laughs> not hard. Yeah, so now we can go to um, I think it was Notepad plus plus where you had opened the pub file. Yeah, so select all of that and replace it with the new content. So I don't really know what changed, but and it needs that new line. Yeah, yeah, it needs that new line at the end. Save it. Oh, Wait, 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 I think. Is it the, is it the window return? Yeah. Um, can you go to file preferences? Or settings, maybe it is. Sorry, it's for settings on the top. So this is a notepad plus plus thing. Let's see in, um, where is this? Let's see. Let's click on new document, maybe, on the left side. File format, select Unix on the left side. Yeah, click close. Now try entering the, uh, the new line. Uh, all right. Does it have to be a new one? What happens if I, there it goes. Uh, okay, so just copy all of that and paste it into, into the other file. Oh. oh, okay. Uh, can you uh, move your window a little bit up? Your um, the bottom of your Notepad plus plus window is not showing up. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. So there you can see it says Windows C R R L F. Okay. Maybe can you click that or right click? No. Yep, yeah. there it is. Oh, okay. Awesome. Convenient. Awesome. I did not know that was a thing. Yeah. No. I yeah. I've run into this in the past. It's just that uh. I didn't think about it, even though we were looking. <laughs> it said CR left. So I just want you to do a test for me. Can you open a new Git Bash window? And type SSH space J. Cool, so we don't get that um, error anymore about the um, pub key being weird because we fixed it. Great. Awesome. Which, okay. So which file fixed that? That was very doesn't. That was the edit the 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 one we just saved uh, from um from Notepad++. Okay. So the the IRS ID RSA pub. Okay. Yes. The so one that it, you was saved. It the, the new line that that got it. It was a new line and it was also whatever content was inside of it. Okay. Some, yeah, because like we tried to delete changed, the the very end, right? The the double yeah. equal sign. Yeah, we we deleted the double equal, and we deleted the uh, some uh, the original format. I think was wrong because it said like comment. You had some other things. Yeah, it was weird. It was like in a block too, so I don't. Yeah, and it wasn't one single line. It was all this. Um, it was something that like we um, that Mobex term created. And I guess he didn't create it in the right exact right format that we needed. And putty key generator does do that for us. Um, okay, so we're striking so, out for MOBA X term today is what you're saying. Yeah, I think if if I were to do this again, I would avoid completely the, the MOBA X term. Okay. Um, uh, but I mean, we 
I mean, that's what they were recommending in Jeep, uh, from Gypsy, right? And several people yeah, in the lab actually used Yeah, they set us up with yesterday, too, so. Yeah. Um, um, okay. Um, so you can close that deep bash window. Um, yeah, close anyway. You can close the pretty key generator. Um, actually, you can close WinSCP, you can close RStudio, you can close Git Bash, you can close everything. Um, uh, say no. I don't know. Oh, I said yes. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Say yes. Then. Type, yeah. Resave the file, yeah. Uh, yeah, because I guess uh, we, we close things in the wrong order because you're supposed to close, I mean, I'm just remembering, you're supposed to close RStudio first because that's the one that uh, is using the temporary file. Um, okay. Yeah, so close, close it all. Um, mm -hmm. I just okay. want us to do like clean, like, um, like what you would actually do for work type of scene. Okay. Right. Uh, or uh, okay. we're almost there. We're almost. I think that's all of it. Okay. <clears throat> so um, okay. So let's say you know it's I don't know it's Monday and you're you're starting to work right. <laughs> so you would open <clears throat> you would open WinSCP first. So I would recommend uh, pinning it if this is your work computer. I would recommend pinning it to uh, your taskbar. Um, and I would say yes to delete the temporary folders, the past ones, because you want it to be make, to make sure that it's always clean. You would log into Gypsy, right? Click login in there. Um, so this this one SCP you can you can um, uh, what is it? Uh, I think if you right click on the Win SCP icon, you can pin to taskbar. Um, oh, you already yeah, you already yeah, pinned I just did that. It. Oh, okay, cool. Moments ago. So this one SCP logs you to um, whatever directory you were in. So let's say um, let's go to the to your home directory, right? And so um, we're gonna do one thing first, which is like let's imagine that you were um, editing a, uh, just one script, right? That doesn't live in a GitHub repository. So you would just uh, right click on repository, edit with, then. Um, uh, uh, yeah, our studio, wait, wait, wait. Can you click remember this editor on the bottom left? Because this is the thing that you click fast last time. Okay. Right, yeah. And what else did it say? Yeah, okay. I don't really understand the next options, but <laughs> we'll leave them like that. So you log okay. into the cluster, right? Uh, sorry, you, um, can you, yeah, okay. Cool, I can see it now. Okay, so now like uh, um, our studio, sorry, um, WinSCP is syncing the file to the temporary directory on your computer, the repositability.r script, right? Um, and so now we could, um, we can uh, <clears throat> go on our studio on the terminal, which is on the bottom left. Um, then we can, um, um, uh, access the cluster with SSH space J. Uh, then we can request a computer node with QRSH. Uh, this will do use the, your defaults, which is like five gigs. It loads all the modules. Then we can go to the folder that, contain, that contains the reproducibility.r script that we are working on. And in this particular case, already there because it's the home directory, but you would normally type like CD uh, for change directory, C for change, D for directory, and then the path of the file that you're working on. Um, um, <clears throat> so at this point, you could, you would then, um, uh, you would then open R, pressing capital R, I mean, pressing typing capital R. Um, then on oh, your script. Wait, okay, so I don't have to hit module and stuff because nope. we remembered that in one of the configuration files, was that like? That was the bash RC file that we edited. Okay, so that's, that's just, it. it's gonna always gonna load the right version of R. The, right now it loads the 3.6.x version, which okay. is the right version as of today. 
Okay. In a week, it won't be. <laughs> <laughs> um, in a week or two. Uh, okay. Uh, but that will be a general thing. It will apply not only to you, it will apply to everyone. Okay. Um, so on the reproducibility.r script on the top left, now we can start typing commands. So um, uh, let me. Um, I'm gonna, sorry, I'm gonna go plug into my monitor. I need more screen space to see, <laughs> to see you and my stuff. Um, um, so this is where we would type like library open parentheses double quote session info. Cool. Um, okay, let's see. Making you big over here. I'm looking at. Um, okay. Cool. And so if you wanted to execute that command, um, um, control enter, right? Uh, no, uh, it's uh, Alt, Control, Enter. B, was, is that what you said? Yeah, just backwards. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay, cool. So that executes it, right? So you go to the Google Doc that I um, that is sent. Oh, I might have to. Is it in the other? Yeah, here we go. Mm -hmm. Um, so this is, I uh, put at the end some R code there. This is code that I use basically in every script that I write. So can you copy all of that? Cool. And can you execute all of it? The way you can do that is you can press uh, Control A to select everything then I'll control enter to execute everything. Now this particular uh, shortcut that we use doesn't work if you have like, let's say over a hundred lines of code, right? Eventually um, there's something called the terminal buffer and it doesn't handle that much. Um, um, so at this point, um, can you scroll up on the terminal? It's like we can go over the output of this command. Of these commands. Okay, so uh, line one of your script loaded the package session info. Then line four printed like uh, a message. And I like to print this message because then it shows up on the log files. Okay. Right. And so this allows me to go between the log file and the R script source because the log file does not include the lines that start with uh, greater than. Um, so you don't see the lines that, of code that were executed. You only see the output that gets printed. Uh, line number five prints the current time when this was evaluated. Line number six, proc.time is a function that prints how much time this process has been running, this R process. And so we can see that for now it had been running for 172 seconds basically. Right? So this gives me an idea of how long something takes. Um, and I can use this information later when like when like someone is like, oh, can you rerun the script? Then I can go to the log file and like get an idea of how much time it's gonna take me to, I mean, it's gonna take the computer to run everything, right? Um, um, line number seven, um, that changes the width of the, um, of the R print um, window. So if you actually make um, your terminal window wider, so that is, that is if you, um, Go to the R Studio in the middle of your of the, uh, yeah, cool. Okay. Then you can see this is 120 characters long, um, and that information is used by by uh, by uh, line number eight session underscore info. Session underscore info is a function from the session info package that doesn't have an underscore. Um, the discrepancy is here is because package names are not allowed to have underscores. Um, okay. So the, the session underscore info function, what it does is that it prints uh, what R version you were using 
So we can see here that it's using our version 3.6.1 patched. Um, the compute system is using, which is Linux CentOS 7 uh, system, um, language, um, time zone, which is Eastern Europe, um, US Eastern, the date. Then underneath that, it says packages, right? And so this is basically, it's printing kind of like a table that has uh, a package column, um, a version, a date, a lib and a source uh, column, right? So um, the package column says the name of the package, the version column, the version number. Uh, date is when the date of, I think when the package, oh, I don't know if it's when it was installed. Yeah, it's when it was installed because you can see for color out, it says 2020, uh, April 23rd, which is today. Um, the leap column that tells us what particular location this uh, package is loaded in from. So you can actually have packages in multiple directories. Um, and so um, at the very end of the output, you see uh, one, two, and three. Those are the library paths that R is using. And so in your case, the first priority path is the one under users your username dash r dash 3.6.x, right? Um, and so these are our packages you, you install, you control, you, you modify, whatever. Uh, 213, those are um, system-wide packages that the person that maintains the R on the cluster controls. Um, and so here we're basically using um, two for everything except for color out which says lib one. Uh, then it says the source of where the package was installed, which was GitHub for that for color out and then CRAN for the rest of them. Uh, and for the GitHub package in particular, it says the GitHub repository, which in this case is um, J Alves AQ slash color out. And then the at part gives us the uh, GitHub commit ID. Um, and this information is really useful when you're working with packages that are under the active development. And that might be the case with us um, because we write our packages ourselves and, um, and, um, uh, and things can change fairly fast, right? Even without the version number changing. So this is really information that, that becomes useful to share to other package authors in case you're having a bug or something like that. Um, and then, but in the more general sense, it's uh, the version information is useful. If you, you know, you're doing a bunch of analysis today and let's say a year or two from now, you're grinding the paper um, to publish the results of the analysis and you want to put on the paper, the version numbers of the software that you use, right? So this is where like this becomes useful because, uh, you know, software changes quite a bit over time. Um, and the stuff we use is fairly like, um, on the edge, um, and so uh, uh, functions that worked like a year ago might not work anymore type of thing. Um, so this is why I always included this in all my scripts. And so I would save, um, uh, what I do at this point normally is after executing these lines, I go to the terminal and I copy paste the output. So if you go and select on the terminal, I would copy and uh, I would select all the output of the session info part. I don't actually uh, copy the, the time and stuff, but I do select all the, uh, what's below the greater than session underscore info. Yeah. You can't use the control Z. You actually have to right click copy, I think, um, um, on Windows at least. So then on your script after a line nine, that's where I would paste this output. What was that like up in the code? Up in the code, I would paste it after after line nine. Yeah. And then I would select all these lines and use the, the keyboard shortcut for commenting uncommented, which is, you already know it, control yep. shift C. Oh, but yeah. then don't delete it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, cool. So at this point, I would save the file, at, yeah, add an empty new line, save it. So what this does is that it saves it on um, on the cluster. It's in, sorry, it saves the new file, the updated file on um, the temporary directory that WinSCP 
then realizes you have a new version and will upload it automatically to the cluster, right? So if you actually quit R on the terminal, so Q uh, open parentheses, uh, then save it. If you type more, which is the Unix command for looking at files, the space reproducibility.r, yeah. press enter. Now you can see, right? Cool. Uh, you can press space to keep seeing the output. Um, and cool. after you're done, cool. So that saved the information there. Um, now, on the top left, um, where it says reproducibility.r, a little bit low, below, you have a warning sign that says package session, session info required but is not installed. This is our studio trying to help you. It's telling you like, oh, there's this, pa this script uses a session info package, but it's not installed. And this is where it gets tricky. It's not installed in your laptop. Right, and this is information that our studio has access to. It doesn't have access to the packages you have installed on the cluster. Right, so uh, this is the next thing. But I typically install the packages themselves on my computer, so I can use the help, um, the console, oh, okay. and look at the help locally. Uh, but then this means keeping in sync what I have on the cluster and what I have on my computer, and that's like a more advanced <laughs> or more complicated thing. Uh, um, I mean, it's, it's, you can do it. It's just, it means you need to have the same versions of R in your computer as the ones that we're using on the cluster. Right. So um, you have to be like meticulous about keeping things nice. Yeah. That yeah. to be. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but then if you do that, you gain the advantage of R studio having access to the package in your computer. And so that will enable autocomplete. It will enable the help files in R studio. So, there's a lot of great um, payoff from doing it. Cool. So, um, okay. So um, now let's continue with a little bit of piece of setup that we didn't do before. Um, so, um, one second, I'm trying to find. Um, um, so, um, can you go to WinSCP? Go to your home directory, which I think you're already in. Um, okay, sorry, I need to look at stuff in my computer. Okay. Um, I'm gonna um, do you, uh, oh, you need to enable the hidden files, sorry. Oh wait, wasn't that? I thought we had enabled it forever, but maybe it went away. Yeah, when I closed it, I feel like I might've missed an option or two. <laughs> <laughs> Find file, wait. Um... Uh, preferences, it's under uh, panels. Oh yeah. And then Go show hidden files. files. There's also a shortcut. Okay. Okay, sweet. Okay, so uh, we need to create what's called um, um, uh, Gypsy, um, the, a GitHub configuration file. Uh, I'm posting stuff on, uh, on the Google Doc.
So, um, from WinSCP, can you create the dot git, git config file? And then paste the contents of what I put on Google Doc. And then for name, that's um, uh, your GitHub username. And then whatever email you have tied to your GitHub account. Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. um, can you also, uh, uh, um, from Venus, I mean, you can save this. Uh, it has an empty line at the end. I'm not sure it does. Okay, I, I was looking somewhere else, sorry. Right. <laughs> um, can you save it? Um, and can you open, um, And you open the dot bash RC file. Um, and can you paste into the end of it this new line? Mm -hmm. Cool, save that. So we're making a shortcut for you. Then this shortcut is called lab old. Um, I'm just giving you the exact same syntax that I use. Uh, and this is the same syntax that I gave Fernando, um, uh, who you know is a collaborator in some of the projects that we're gonna be working on. Um, that way when I say some stuff, it'll be the same for all of us. <laughs> right. Okay, so you can save that, close it. Um, then on your RStudio window, um, um, exit the terminal. So that- Is that exit or quit? Exit. Then, uh, so you exited the, the QRSA session. Now you need to exit the cluster. Now, now that you're back in your computer, you can close RStudio. Um, and uh, close WinSCP. We're gonna start from um, scratch. Uh, terminate Gypsy and close application without saving a workspace. I would say yes, maybe, I think. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what you selected also before. Maybe, cool. does it maybe save your like preferences and like, like the hidden know. files and stuff like that? I don't know. Um, uh, probably doesn't, but now we know the shortcut, right? Which was Control Alt H. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. So now let's assume that you you know uh, you're gonna uh, do um, uh, you're gonna work on a project that we're version controlling with Git. So at this point, can you open um, WinSCP? You have it. You already have it pinned to your taskbar. Um, Cool. So now, um, yeah, log into the cluster. Um, and now we need to navigate. Oh, we see the hidden files. Cool. All right, so something's different. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know what happened either. Okay, so um, let's see. Can you mouse over some of the icons on the right side? Uh, 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 oh, um, it, there's your username, El Hookie, but then I don't know what the other icons do. 
Oh yeah, click that one. That looks nice. Okay, so can you type there slash? Um, so sorry, uh, overwrite everything there. Um, There's gonna be slash uh, DCL zero one uh, slash Lieber, which is L I E B E R. Um, there's an E before the B. I should know that by now. Day three, come on, or day four. <laughs> uh, don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, then A for Andrew, and then Jaffe, which is his last name, slash lab. Um, then uh, click add on the right side because we want to make it a bookmark. Cool. So now click OK. And OK. So now we're in one of our disks that has plenty of space where we work for multiple projects. Um, the one project that you're going to be working on is the Goes Hide MDD RNA Seq. So we're going to that one. Uh, I mean, that's one project we're going to be working on. And it's using code from the Zambi uh, Hive uh, folder, which I think it, if you scroll further down, you'll see it. Um, yeah, Zambi Hive bipolar. Right? But let's go to the GOES one. Cool. So, you know, here we see a bunch of stuff. Um, so, uh, let's, let's um, we were working. Um, so Luis uh, Fernand and I were working on Tuesday on a script located inside the data directory. So can you go there? And we were working with the drop underscore flags underscore samples dot R script. So can you open that, the dot R one? Can you open it with um, R studio? Which oh. is save, it's an option. We saved it last time. Cool. Um, um, say yes to that. Cool. Um, okay. So, so now we're, you know, uh, on a directory in our computer uh, that is getting synced through uh, Windows CP. We need to go to the terminal um, on our studio. SSHJ. Uh, the terminal, not the console. Oh. Cool. So now let's request, um, let's request the computer with, let's say, uh, 30 gigs of RAM. So that would be curasage space dash L space uh, mem free which is mem for memory, underscore free, then equal, uh, let's say 30 gigs, which would be 30 and a capital G, comma, h underscore, uh, lowercase h underscore, uh, v for virtual, then mem for memory. The, hard, the h is for hard, um, okay. equal 30 gigs also. Um, and actually, let's say we want to work on the, on the computer machines from Andrew. So uh, can you press Control A to go to the beginning of the line? Then use the right arrow to move to just after the, just before the M in mem free. Then type blue J and comma. Space? This syntax, sorry? Is there a space after that or no? Nope. Exactly okay. what I was going to say. This syntax breaks if you have a space. <laughs> um, it doesn't let you to have a space. So press enter. Okay, so we're requesting a computer from the Blue JQ that has 30 gigs of RAM free. And so if, if you're not able to access any of these machines, it's probably because um, some of us are using them quite a bit. And you can ask people in the lab to be, hey, I want to work too. Give me some computers. Right? <laughs> and so the way you can check how uh, busy is everything 
is uh, there's a new command I'm going to teach. This is a Q peak, Q P I C. Uh, no, well, oh. sorry, <laughs> that's one version of it. <laughs> where, you, where you see, you see. Uh, I mean, we're going to see a some very similar output, but um, let's say we will only want to see the information for the the blue JQ. So that you say a space dash L, a space blue J. Then press L. Oh, sorry, press L. Press enter. Um, or maybe it's without the dash L. Sorry. Mm, what did I miss? Let me look at my history of command. Oh, dash Q. Ah, uh, Q. Okay, so it's Q name, not like computer name. Yeah, sorry. The, even the error message was telling us what to do. Cool. So now we can see that uh, uh, on the very far right side, we can see the mem free column. So a lot of these machines have a lot of memory free right now. Um, and they're actually not really being used um, because the blue J column says five out of 192. So out of 192 compute nodes, only we're only using five right now on blue J. Um, so, uh, I mean, I guess Andrew will get asked to share our computers with people. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, that's why we have them also, right? So we can use them. So now you have, you know, um, a session with 30 gigs of RAM. But um, if, if you type PWD, so, you know, imagine that you just type QRSH and you, you request the, uh, computer, uh, a computer for the Blue JQ with 30 gigs of RAM, right? Um, and then you got it. If you type PWD uh, and then press enter, PWD stands for uh, print working directory. You'll see that it always, you'll always start at your home directory. And so you need to navigate to, um, to where we have the scripts and data files. And so this is where we made the alias uh, on bash RC. So that the alias that we made, what is called lab old. Um, um, it's not the best alias. You, you know, you're free to rename it to something later on that makes more sense for you. Uh, but this is the one that I'm using and the one I taught Fernanda to use also. So you type lab old on the terminal. Lab old. Then press enter. Uh, type PWD again. Okay. You'll see that, oh, we're in that this directory, right? So, um, but in order to get to where drop, drop underscore flag underscore samples that R was. Um, uh, we need to go into the goals folder. So G O E S and then press tab. So we'll auto complete for you. And we were inside the data folder. So data type data. Um, yeah, awesome. Press, uh, press enter. All right. So you type PWD, um, you see that we're in DCL01 liberjaf ajaf slash lab slash ghost hide MDD RNA seek slash data. If you move your mouse to the far right under the files panel on our studio, um, you see that WinSCP is syncing the, um, the data into a temporary directory under your uh, Windows computer at app data, local, temp, then a, then a random number. Then the structure after that, WinCP mirrors everything, the file structure that we have on the cluster. So it says DCL01, Liber, AJAFI, Lab, Ghost Hide, um, RNA seq uh, data, right? So this means that if you use WinCP to like, um, uh, to sync files from different directories on the Ghost Hide MDD RNA seq, the files panel under your studio will be populated with the structure that we have on the cluster. Right. So this is useful if you're working with multiple R scripts in the same session uh, and they might live in different directories type of thing. Um, okay, so let's, okay, so we open our script. We have uh, our computer with 30 gigs of RAM. We're in the correct data uh, folder. So now on the terminal, we can type capital R Press enter. 
And so these loads are we like the color out package, right? That we edit it to load always for us to make our colors pretty. Uh, so you could, for example, go to line one of the code um, um, and then press um, Alt, Control, Alt, Control, Enter. Yeah, cool, stuff like that. So let's do something uh, nice to the script. Um, um, can you type on line, um, can you press a new line after line three on the script? And then uh, 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 start the new comment and call, um, call the comment like um, style this, this um, uh, um, style this these script. Mm -hmm. So then there, can you, on the next line, can you, I mean, on a new line, can you type um, styler? Uh, I'll give you the command, sorry. Let me just, because this is, um, uh, it'll be a mouthful to, to um, You guys do the double pound for comments? Yep. Okay. I do anyway. And I'm, I'm teaching you what I do. <laughs> well, that's probably good. <laughs> yeah. uh, um, sorry. Um, I need to look up something myself. Um, Well, can you copy that fancy command? I'll, I'll paste it in line five, replace you. Know. Where it says your underscore script underscore name replaces by drop underscore flag underscore sample. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, so um, try executing that. I imagine it's gonna it's not gonna work, but let's see. Uh, sorry, save the file. Uh, this might be a complicated scenario. Yeah. Okay. Um, execute that line. Let's see if it works. Okay. No package so there's, no, styler. there's no package called styler. So um, can you? Um, Install the package on the terminal. I'm teaching you a command that's going to edit the particular R script that we're working on. So this will be an interesting scenario. Wait, so it goes back and it edits the actual the script. Yeah, that's why I was asking Ooh. you to save it before uh, before executing, so we have this latest version of it. Uh, press one which will be the, 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 uh, the cloud mirrors. We can actually also edit um, this so it becomes your default. Um, actually, let's do that in the meantime. Um, this will make your life easier later. Okay. Um, so uh, from CyberDoc, Cyberduck, uh, we need CP. Um, can you go? Oh, it didn't like. All right. While setting permissions and or timestamp? Um, uh, uh, click skip. Yeah. Um, sorry, that's okay. Uh, 
from your art. So this is the uh, wait. Why didn't uh, okay? Um, let me uh, let's finish. Sorry, the art profile. <laughs> we'll get back okay. to this. <laughs> My mind is uh, uh, is too much going on. Uh, sorry. So we'll we'll do that uh, later. Um, um, so uh, go to your home. So that um, so uh, can you, yeah users of Huki. I would actually add it as a bookmark. Uh, you can do that later. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cool. Um, so can you um, uh, edit the dot r profile file? Then from the Google Doc, um, uh, uh, if you go, if you scroll up to where we edited the .r profile, I added some new code there. Do you know what page it was on? There, 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 where my cursor is. No, yeah. one, yeah. So the HTTPS, that's the. Just to yeah, copy the whole thing? Yeah. And save that quote. Cool. So these will always use the, the cloud and it won't ask you like, oh, which one do you want to use to install stuff? Okay. Cool. You can close that now. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, can you go to goes data? The data folder. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, okay. Can we go back to our studio? Cool. Um, okay. So this, you just installed the package, right? That was the last command you used? Yes. Actually, the, the stuff that we did for editing the behavior of the up arrow also affects the terminal R window. So if you type I. Oh, oh, oh. wait, wait. I just hit. You hit up arrow, yeah. Then up okay. arrow. I'm getting a You're nothing getting a there pink? sound. Oh, okay. So maybe it doesn't work on Windows. Okay. Uh, never mind. Oh, I see. No, no, no. This is something we need to edit on your computer. Okay. A lot of a lot of the, the up arrow behavior we can edit your computer too. I don't know if you want that. We could do that too. Uh uh. uh um, actually, that's very simple to do. Mm, is it? No, it's not as simple. All right. Uh, so I was speaking out loud. Okay, so um, just execute now line five. Well, we can do the, the other stuff later. Um, cool. Uh, say yes to that. Yeah, you're oh. typing Y on line six of your code. Yeah. Cool. So one file, one file has um, changed. Um, can you close the drop flag samples file and reopen it um, with um, WinSCP? So this is where we edited the source script, and uh, WinSCP is not able to to uh, select, select edit with uh, our studio. Cool. So a lot of things change. Uh, they you know, change into a nice new format. Um, um, if you, um, because this is something we don't want to use every time. Uh, can you comment out line number five? Cool. So now let's say we're, uh, we're working on something, right? Um, actually for that type of comment, I only add uh, one pound, not the two pounds. I use the two pounds for comments I, I made myself, one pound like a, or whatever, yeah. So just one if you're trying to comment out like a line of code, but then like two if it's like really a comment. 
Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, cool. Um, cool, Let's just save that. So this, at this point, you, you know, you did some R code, uh, you save, you, you know, you updated your script, but now we need to share our results with everyone else. So can you go to the terminal uh, panel on the bottom left? Um, um, so at the top of that panel, of that uh, portion where it says uh, terminal, can you click there and say new terminal? Or I mean, you have terminal too. Uh, I mean, okay, now we have terminal three. <laughs> so um, SSH into the cluster. Here is SH. This one we only need a, a small computer, so the default of five gigs is plenty for us. Oh, okay. We don't need a one with thirty gigs. Um, so now uh, go uh, to the goals folder, right? So you need to use your alias. Then CD. Goes autocomplete data, path for autocomplete, enter there. Now type git space status. So at this point, we're going to be using the git module um, that has a newer version of git. And it says, like, ooh, you have modified a file called drop underscore samples.r. Right, that's the one we just modified. Um, and so uh, we want to keep the git status output clean. In this particular case, it's not clean because there's a couple log files that Fernando created that he has in version controlled. But we'll do that in our session tomorrow with him. We'll have him do that part. We'll, uh, for now, we are gonna, uh, we're only going to version control the changes you made, which are on the drop underscore flag underscore samples that are file. Um, so for that, um, uh, before we actually make the changes, let's review what the changes are. So you can do that by typing git space diff. Uh, diff for different, for, uh, for different uh, yeah, space. Uh, then the name of the file, which in this case is drop underscore flag underscore samples. Yep. You can autocomplete, I think, uh, dot r because there's actually two of them. There's a dot sh that Fernando created also. Then press enter. Um, cool. Uh, so the green lines are stuff we added, the red lines are stuff we deleted. And so for example, we added, you know, we definitely added the styler style file command, right? But then, um, that also did a lot of stuff of stylistic changes, right? It added like the spaces between the equal signs and the verbose. Um, if you press space again, then uh, um, on the SGE jobs command, it like added more spaces. Did, uh, oh, it added a space at the top before the comment. Right, it made it made it a lot easier to read that one instead of pound uh, SGE jobs. It uh, it has now pound space SGE jobs. Right? Okay. And so, in this particular case, the styling of the code was already fairly good. You didn't need to change much. Um, and you can exit this by uh, pressing the letter Q for quit. Okay. So type git space status again. Um, and just to, as a reminder of uh, what we need to do. And then git status gives a lot of um, helpful messages of what you should try to do. And so um, um, it says here, use git add with a file to update what will be committed. This is for saying uh, uh, the git add command is for um, uh, telling git which files we want to include in our next save point. So in this, at this point of time, let's type git space add space, uh, then the file name drop, blah, 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 dot r. Mm -hmm. Press enter. Now uh, type git status again, and you can just type uh, git space s and then up arrow. Yeah, enter. Let's see like, oh, this, uh, you have changes to be committed. 
right? And so let's let's make the commit. So for this, you can type uh, git space commit uh, space dash m for message. Then space double quotes. Um, any message you want here, it has to be uh, specific to what we did. So you could call it like style the style the drop flag samples the script. Um, and that's okay. Cool. Press enter. Now type git status again. You can use the shortcuts. Oh no, it's efficient permissions. Uh, uh, this is because we're working in a shared directory. Uh, okay. Mm. I don't have a way of fixing it all, I think. And, um, can you type for me? ls space um, dash lha space tilde press enter so you're already part of the your jaffe group hmm. <laughs> okay this is because fernando is not part of the liber jaffe group and so by default a lot of the files he makes are under the user group um, and when, when we're going to have to ask him to edit some permissions for you to work. Um, that's good to know. Uh, uh, that's kind of a bummer. So, um, I, you know, at this point, in theory, you could then commit and then and then git push, right? Um, um, uh, Let's see which one should work for you. Um, um, I'm thinking of which other one you can maybe do a tiny edit. Practice some stuff here. Um, okay. Um, okay. So um, can you copy line five? We'll do this again, but in a different script. Uh, I mean, line four and five, four and five. Yeah, copy those. Uh, close this script. Uh, then in Cyberduck. OK. Uh, so is this why? Because I don't have permissions for this file, because it's Fernandez? Yeah. I need to, I'm not sure exactly why. It could be that. Um, um, so. Skip again? Yeah, skip. Okay. So can you go uh, up two folders? Can you go to one called TWAS? This is one I control. Um, can you go to um, um, BSP2? Um, and uh, can you scroll further down? Uh, yeah, so let's open the, um, the build underscore beam R script. Um, and then add those lines after line 11. Cool, just rename instead of drop underscore flags and call it yield underscore bins. Cool, on your terminal one, um, uh, uh, quit R, or I mean, you didn't need to quit R. You can just change the directories. You can use the setwd command to use. For what? Um, 
dot 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 um, then T was um, then BSP two. Mm -hmm. Close quotes close. Execute yeah, cool. Can um, actually line fourteen of the script. You can uh, comment that line. Yeah. And uh, you can actually, so you can actually execute comments. So it's just save the file before, because this uh, this script is going to edit whatever you, yeah. So you can uh, select uh, stuff on any line um, and then use the um, all, uh, all control enters uh, shortcut. Okay, so that way you don't accidentally leave that open. Mm -hmm. Leave that uncommented for when you want to run this in, in bulk. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, so uh, you can close these beam files, these uh, script, because uh, like um, Green SCP is enabled to you know, detect the stuff, which changed. Uh, um, cool. So terminal tree. Um, can you um, um, go to the um, uh, the TWAS folder, so it's cd dot dot uh, slash dot dot like TWAS ESP2. What was the uh, B for brain sick? Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, enter type deep space status. Uh, can you git add the build underscore bims file? Mm -hmm. Cool. Now, can you type git space C and then up arrow? Now, can you edit your 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 commit message? Uh, what was that called? Build uh, Build underscore uh, uh, bims bims not bims. I know it's similar. <laughs> yeah, let's try that. Mm, okay, one second. I can, I can, now this is one I control. Um, or I should control, oh, maybe Andrew controls. Uh -huh. Okay, let's see. I'm running, I'm changing the permissions to the Git uh, folders um, um, on my computer. This just takes a while. You just try it again out of curiosity. I mean, my, my command is still running, but maybe it's still really working for you. Yeah, yep. cool. <laughs> still changing permissions in my computer <laughs> um, in that folder. Anyway, at this point, you made uh, you made a commit. Cool. In a project where you have permissions to do it, <laughs> we need to fix that on the other one. Now, can you type git space status so we can go back, get back on track? So it says like, oh, your branch is ahead of origin slash master by one commit. Origin slash master, that's, um, that is uh, the GitHub repository. So you type git space push. And then um, uh, type enter. Uh, and it's like, oh, you wanna add all this stuff? Say yes. Mm -hmm. I was right not found, cannot read from remote deposit repository. Okay, so that is something uh, I'm going to fix right now on my computer because I need to give you permissions to this. Um, so on Slack, I'm actually right now adding you to the TWAS project <laughs> so you can see this stuff. Uh, some of this stuff is about to happen. Um, but I'm also, I need to go to github.com to edit 
um, um, to give you permissions on github.com to uh, write on this project. Um, um, Mm -hmm. uh, man, I'm going to the uh, github.com slash Libre Institute slash keywords because that's the name of this GitHub repository. Then I went to uh, settings, manage access, um, and it asked for my, my GitHub password. And now I need to add you. What's your GitHub username? Uh, L.A. Huki. L.A. Cool. Uh, you should receive an email. Okay. Right. Or just go to uh, um, open a new tab and then go to github.com. Uh, slash Liber Institute. Um, <laughs> you have 2000 on ready now. <laughs> uh, slash um, uh, at the end of it, uh, slash TWAS. Cool. You can see the code on. Awesome. Uh, Okay, so uh, can you go back to um, to the terminal window and can you try to git push again? This is the 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 hint was on that. Please make sure you have the correct access rights and the repository exists. So that's where I had to fix. <laughs> um, cool. So at this point, you share with the world uh, your changes, and you go to the uh, Slack uh, window. Um, on the TWAS channel, we get an update, an automatic update. Um, nice. <coughs> that, um, cool. So uh, well, we need to, I'm gonna ask Fernando, I mean, we're meeting with him tomorrow, but I'm gonna ask him to, make sure we can do all the stuff and um, actually maybe I'm the one that controls the goes uh, directory <laughs> um, give me a second um, um, I'm curious Satan and um, Cool. Um, can you go on your terminal? Can you go, um, can you type CD space dash? Press enter. So this is a shortcut that um, transports you back to the previous directory you were in. So now we're back in the, in the ghost hide. Uh, go ahead, sorry, yeah, ghost hide mdb rna seek slash data one. Okay. Can you um, um, type uh, g i t space c and then the up arrow twice, I think? Yeah, press enter. Oh. Okay, so yeah, so I control that one too. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. Okay, now you can type git push there too. My God, I'm getting so much done today. <laughs> and now on uh, Slack on the high bipolar channel, um, we get an update. Oh, cool. cool. nice. So now you have everything set up.
Um, and the rest of it is practicing <laughs> these things. Um, um, you like the up arrow behavior, right? Yeah, that, that's pretty neat. Um, okay, so, um, so let's if just if I don't type anything first, will it behave differently than it would have other, like, than like a regular, like, command prompt would? Where it just yes. gives you whatever you... Yes, the, the, the history in the order that you've typed. Okay, so it's, now, the short, it's just that you can, like, kind of search by first letters and, like, first chunks of word. Yeah, chunks, okay. chunks of word. Uh, now, this gets, a, this gets a bit complicated because you have multiple terminals open. And so the history, the, the history file that where things are searched for okay. uh, only become available to other terminal windows once you save your current one and then open a new one. So, so if I go back to terminal one. Quit R, then, then you wouldn't see this git commit thing. You quit R. Quit, um, Yeah, so you type git space um, uh, c and then use up arrow. It's not going to show nothing. you anything. Yeah, because it wasn't saved in that RAM, right? So, um, so yeah, for in order for that to work, you would need to create the terminal tree, then open again terminal one, right? Um, so why did we open a new terminal to do all the, the Git? Was it so that we could keep R open if you wanted to keep working in R? Exactly. Yeah. 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 Uh, also because we requested the, the computer with 30 gigs at this point. Oh, okay. okay. Don't, don't waste the, the good computer. Yeah, they're getting access to the good computer. Um, okay. So I think this, it's a lot simpler than I was uh, speaking out loud earlier. I mean, thinking out loud about how hard this would be. I think it's actually uh, fairly simpler. It's, it's actually simpler in your case than it would be on, um, on a Mac computer. I think so. So if you go to uh, WinSCP, uh, sorry, not WinSCP, if you go to your um, home direct, uh, the file explorer, the Windows file explorer, um, um, then uh, instead of the .ssh folder, can you go up one folder? Um, cool. So, um, from WinSCP, can you go to your home? Can you move this window to the left? Sorry. Uh, yeah, then go to WinSCP. Uh, I don't know where you're getting all those things. Uh, just, uh, Uh, I don't know what is that uh, timestamp stuff. We might need them. Can you just take a screenshot of that error? Because mm -hmm. um, we might need to ask um, um, some people for help there. I'm not sure um, exactly that one. How to deal with it. Um, I mean, I feel like there's a hint there about timestamps, but I'm not sure uh, if this is a, a setting in Windows CP that we need to change or something. Um, cool. Um, so uh, yeah, just say uh, skip. And then go to your bookmark for home. Then um, can you move this window to your right? Um, so we're going to drag and drop folders or files, actually. Yeah, so can you um, um, drop there the input RC, um, the git, the dot git config, and the dot uh, bash profile files? Wait, so the, um... the left click on, on bash profile. Yeah. Then shift left click on git config. So don't, you're right clicking, not left clicking. The, um, the input RC. Oh. Um, 
or is it control click maybe mm. oh wait, you can just do one by one i guess okay <laughs> <laughs> so yeah just drag that one a little you know with the left click and drag it onto the not onto the ssh nope uh, we want it into the the one oh, into just your, the general users yeah yeah Um, and then also do the same thing for that input RC. Um, um, one second, I'm gonna look at my Windows computer. Uh, that is asleep. Oh, okay. Can you um, drag the .r profile to mm -hmm. that location? I was trying to find which was the location for this one lives also. Um, you already have a .git config file. Can you open that for me with um, a text? Um, Notepad++. Plus plus. Okay. It has a lot of options. Um, uh, can you then open the, the git config that we have on the cluster? Uh, and so, uh, copy all of that. And then replace the user part. This will, we're going to leave the filter LFS op options, but we're just going to replace all of that. Okay, cool. Save this. Cool. Um, okay. Uh, go back to the... Uh, you don't need to close uh, Notepad plus plus. We're about to use it again. Um, can you um, uh, can you open on Notepad plus plus the bash RC file that we copied into the computer? So you, you don't need WinSCP at this point. Um, uh, Second, I gotta dodge Zoom to get out of here. Oh. My the headphones bash. died off. <laughs> Wait, did you say bash profile? Sorry, the battery of my of headphones died. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. All right, awesome. Here too. Okay. Uh, sorry, not not the bash R profile. Sorry, um, the bat bash RC file. That's the one you uh, drag and drop. No, I think. Oh, I think I missed that one. Oh. Oh, then you can yeah. Cool. Oof. All right. So this has a lot of stuff. Uh, oh, actually, we already had the alias lab all in line 26. Can you comment out that one? That one will work on your computer because that's uh, something for the cluster. Uh, let's see, can you scroll down? Uh, can you comment out lines 40 to, uh, to 49? Do I remember what is it? I don't know the shortcut on Notepad plus plus. It's not that. I think it might <laughs> be Q. Um, yeah, it's Control Shift Q. All right, awesome. Um, you don't need line fifty two, and you don't need line fifty three either. Okay, can you save this? Okay, can you open a new uh, git um, bash window? Don't close this, we'll, we might need to go back to it. Cool. So now it looks like the cluster terminal. Right, if you use the up arrow, like just type S, sorry. Oh. Like um, uh, just type S up arrow. Now you have it again. 
on this terminal. And this is a terminal window we're using in our studio. Oh, so like that first login will look more like the login after you hit SH. SH. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so actually, you know, let's just try that. So um, um, go to your RStudio window and then um, open a new terminal. All right. Cool. Um, so yeah, um, so type SSH, SSHJ, or I mean, or you could have used the up arrow stuff. Yeah, enter, uh, type QRSH. Then open R. So then uh, print, let's say stop, open parenthesis. I mean, where are the print? Uh, just um, uh, stop, open parenthesis, open quotes, uh, hello. Yeah. Now type S up arrow. Right, so now that works because this is using the terminal um, inputs that we edited on your computer because this is the, tr the terminal program lives in your computer. It's kind okay. of like it's kind of like this inception type of scenario. <laughs> <laughs> computers inside of computers. Yeah, yeah, cool. Right, so now you can use this up arrow there. That's why earlier I thought you you had it, but like this would have been the same thing on a Mac user. Okay. They would have needed to edit their own uh, bash RC files on the Mac to, or on the Linux to then modify the up arrow on their computers. Um, um, if you go to the console now. Um, um, I see that that's at least red. Uh, no, that, we, this R was already existed, uh, but because we edited your R profile, you need to also copy paste here the remote stuff. Uh, the remote install from GitHub, the stuff we have on the our on on our R profile, which if you go back to the Google Doc, um, or I mean you could also see it from um, your computer, um, the dot R profile, that uh, line six remotes blah blah blah, without the cat, yeah. You need to install that on your own computer. Oh, I think I didn't copy it. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, oh, you don't have remotes in your computer. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, you have R 3.5.2. So I would, at this point, I would recommend also updating R. Okay. Uh, but, uh, but, uh, but, um, R is R 4.0 is about to get released later this week or early next week. So, um, yeah. Uh, I gotta install R tools. No, I you only, don't. You I don't only need ever to use get. the R on this for like class a little bit. I usually use my like desktop in my old lab for yeah. most of it. So this is probably a little shaky of a setup. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. That's what I'm saying. Like we'll, we, you'll probably need to do any of this anyway. We're all 4.0 at the end of this week or beginning of next. Um, just, so just, what uh, will installing the colors to this will let the colors in, when I'm on the cluster in the terminal be? Uh, so. You know? No, what's it, the goal it, here? Um, the goal is to change the colors if you use R from the Git Bash on your own computer. Oh, okay. Uh, so this is really maybe not necessary. This is a lot more useful if you if you if you're on a on a Mac user, and you you use the terminal a lot even on your own computer. This is not maybe the same area that Windows users are frequently faced with. But I mean, we could just do it. Uh, if you go if you use the up arrow twice, I think you can install the color out package. Oh, I have to install. Oh, what do I have to? Ins 
Zero access status. Mm. Oh, I got to install our tools. It's a whole. Where does it say that? Oh, okay. You're right at the bottom. Oh, oh. Okay, so we'll, we'll skip this and we'll deal with it later once okay. uh, once R four point zero is out. I mean, uh, because um, yeah, I know how to do this already because I already have R four point zero on my Windows computer. But like, uh, let's wait until it's officially released to avoid any any extra pain. Uh, cool. So yeah, so we edited a lot of configuration stuff, right? Uh, all right. So I think at this point, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> take a long break. <laughs> then, you know, you have questions, let, let us know. But um, you're probably the Windows user that has the best setup now. Well, that's great lab. to hear. Because <laughs> <laughs> right. um, I, I mean, I didn't go, I didn't do this without, uh, without people in the lab. Um, um, but now that I'm, advocating for using this way of using R Studio in the terminal. I think, uh, uh, you know, maybe we'll convince other people in the lab to also switch to this. Um, cool. So uh, I'm gonna, uh, where are my, uh, I'm gonna stop recording.